The Amazon Echo, the Google Home, Apple's HomePod. For the past few years, smart home devices have been making life easier in living rooms around the world. And now, Google's finally gets a screen. Is that display worth the extra dollars, though? I'm Mr. Mobile. Let's find out in the Lenovo Smart Display Review. I've been using the smart display for a little less than a week at home and in the office, and frankly, I thought I'd need more time to get to know it. It's pretty straightforward. All the typical functions you expect of a Google Home are here. You can set reminders, ask it for the weather, get it to play music or podcasts, even get your blood pressure up watching the daily news. Okay. Hey, Google. Stop. Enough. Play something relaxing. Okay, here's a Spotify playlist called Relax and Unwind. The screen is what changes the game here, because in addition to the above, now you can do things like watch YouTube videos. You can make video calls, if you know anyone who uses Google Duo. You can watch Star Trek Discovery, if you pay for CBS. You can manage things like smart thermostats and light bulbs by touch now, as well as by voice. If you use Google Photos, and by the way, you should, this is the best digital picture frame there is because you can control it with your voice. Show me pictures from Barcelona. And those who want to devote some kitchen counter space to the smart display can take advantage of step-by-step -step recipes with visual aids. Now, usually where an aspirational product like this falls down is on execution, but not this time. Almost everything the smart display promises to do, it does, and does well. I tested the larger of the two sizes, and the screen itself was big, bright, and colorful. The 10-watt speaker is quite loud and delivers a surprising amount of bass. I love my UE Roll 2 for listening to music in the studio, and the smart display speaker sounds about the same to me. I adore the casing which blends soft-touch plastic and bamboo cladding in a design that's somehow at once bold and subtle. It's pretty enough to make me forget that there's no built-in battery here. This is meant to be plugged in and stay plugged in. Just a heads up. And the camera brings more than enough quality for video calls. Now, let's touch on that camera. If you're like me, you're a little iffy about the prospect of something sitting in your home watching you all the time. Well, Google and Lenovo thought about that. Flick this little switch on the side and the camera's off. Not just off, covered with a physical plastic hatch. Slide a similar switch on top and the microphone is muted too. The mic is muted. On a device so closely tied to Google, whose name is never far from privacy debates, these measures go a long way toward making me more comfortable welcoming it into my home. I really only ran into two rough patches where the device didn't behave as it should. First, despite its dual array microphones, the smart display often missed my voice commands when it was playing loud music, to the point where I had to repeatedly shout to get it to respond. And sometimes my commands took a bit longer to process than I expected. Never more than a few seconds, and never more than once every 10 requests or so, but since it happened on both my home and office networks, I thought it worth a mention. My bigger gripes are the same ones that come with any new product category. It doesn't do as much as I'd like. I haven't been able to cast to it from my phone like I can with a Chromecast. Also, there's no Netflix integration at this time, so I can't just throw up a mystery science theater while I'm cooking. Sorry, Netflix can't be played on smart display. These just seem like big missed opportunities, and I hope they're corrected in the future. For what it's worth, Google did say back at CES in January that casting capability is planned, so maybe we'll see that in a future fix. Less important, but again, just kind of a missed opportunity, you can't use the camera to take a quick photo. I mean, Jibo can do that, and he can't do anything. Sorry, buddy. Are those shortfalls enough to keep me from recommending this thing? Not at all. Yes, the smart display is more expensive than a traditional Google Home, by about 100 bucks, give or take. But if the question is whether the display brings enough utility to justify that added cost, I think the answer is definitely yes. 
I never paid much attention to smart home stuff before this device. And the thing that makes the difference is that visual element of the display. If you do a lot of shopping from home, or you're otherwise big into Amazon, you'll want to consider an Echo Show instead. And I believe Phil Nickinson will be running a comparison over at Modern Dad for that. But if you're as dependent on Google as many of us are these days, a Google Home is almost certainly the better option. And given the choice between a standard screenless Google Home and the Lenovo Smart Display, well, I'd gladly drop the extra dollars on the latter. This video is brought to you by TunnelBear. True story, it's the first VPN I ever used, and I'm genuinely glad to sponsor it. TunnelBear lets you browse the web safely on a public hotspot, which I'm on frequently, and it lets you do it with the flick of a switch. TunnelBear even opened itself up to an independent audit to prove it's keeping its security promises. Mainly, though, I gotta be real, I'm here for the mascot. Help support Mr. Mobile, secure your browsing for the next two years, and save almost 60%. Hit the links in the description to secure your special deal on TunnelBear. And thanks. The Lenovo Smart Display is on sale this week and getting a lot of coverage at Android Central, folks. Tune in over there for in-depth coverage on its funky implementation of Android things. And again, check out Modern Dad's take for the perspective of someone who's a lot more comfy with home tech than Mr. Mobile is. Let me know in the comments if you find this sort of smart home coverage useful. And until next time, thanks for watching. And stay mobile, my friends.